Well, I'm going to try something new. I'm actually recording this on Zoom, which I don't usually do. Uh, I record the conversations like I just had with Steve on Zoom and, of course, Aristo and others that I have conversations with. It's always on Zoom, and it comes out high definition. And the ones that I, the recording that I usually use does not come out high definition. So I'm doing an experiment. The title of the video for today is, um, Is Earth Overpopulated? My brother Tim was born on June 10th in 1952. A missionary to the indigenous people of Colombia, he was killed, or as my family sees it, martyred, about two, two decades ago. That wasn't population control as such, although such murders fit in well with the plans of the so-called elite to reduce and control world population. Of course, they plan population reduction on a much larger scale than just a couple missionaries in Latin America. Most of the inequities in our world are purposely, purposefully engineered by these psychopaths that would like to get world population down to more manageable numbers. Here's a link I want to talk about, and it's www.zo.utexas.edu forward slash uh, courses forward slash THOC, that's capitalized, forward slash Texas capitalized dot HTML. Hopefully you will have at least one more perspective on this issue. Indeed, and on the other computer I have a I have the screen up that shows that link that I just mentioned in the, in the blurb, and I provided that so that you can check it out for yourself. I'm giving another perspective on this. Now, they take the, the thing based on arable land and, uh, and how much room each person would have, et cetera, if everybody was put into this uh, us area the size of Texas. And they say, well, not all of Texas is arable land and there's roads and everything else, all of which is true. All right, the, the, Some of the arguments they make is true. What they don't uh, bring into account is the fact of how much of the world's wealth measured in money, because that's how we measure it, unfortunately, uh, how much of the world's wealth is spent on war and on financing both sides of every major skirmish since at least the First World War. And this is what the Illuminati does. This is how they spend their resources because they want to control the people on the earth. And, and seven billion people is a little bit too large a population for them to adequately control and keep in it, within manageable parameters of cities and stuff like that and leaving most of the land vacant for themselves to use as they will. Now what would happen, just hypothetically, what would happen if instead of using money for war, if we, if we got rid of the Illuminati and we got rid of their game plan to try to reduce the world's population, we took that money and we started investing it in reclaiming deserts and we started reclaiming the parts of our land that quote are uninhabitable now you say Ron that can't be done oh it's being done all the time it's been being done for some time now they're actually reclaiming desert acre by acre by acre at a time in various localities it's being done look it up I should have I should have put a link on for that too but I didn't but if you google it and you ask the right questions, or if you even ask me, I'll try to put some kind of a link up that shows you how they're reclaiming desert or land that seems useless. They're reclaiming it for farming and for agriculture and for growing uh, things that are, that are essential to human life and human development and essential to life on the planet, period. It's all a matter of where we're going to put our focus, where we're going to put our energy. And we, if we keep putting it in competition and trying to do the one-upmanship thing and lacking cooperation 
if we're going to keep doing the things that we've kept doing because of cabal influence, because of the influence of megalomaniacs and psychopathic individuals that want to run the world like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. I saw a video, uh, a short video recently of how many organizations Rockefeller, the head guy, I guess David Rockefeller, is in charge of. I mean, I think there's like 10 or 12 different organizations. He's the head of them. So one man is putting his influence over everything else, and that's how the money is spent, because they're generating money for that. All of the taxes collected in the world go to pay the debt on false loans by the cabal to the people. But remember, if you do your research, people are the value. We are the asset. They have the liability because they've taken it upon themselves to run the world. So actually, they've t turned us into a, li into a liability and turned what they're stealing from us into their own asset rather than our assets. And so our asses are on the line and, and we have been sold into bondage and sold a bill of goods. What does this have to do with, with population? It has to do with focus. Where are we going to focus our attention? We can focus our attention on feeding the multitudes of people. There, there is no inability to feed the world's population. But when you make it a matter of money, and at that, debt instruments, then there becomes a problem because, it's con because the vast majority of that wealth measured in money is held by a relative handful of people and they use the majority of people that they employ to control the rest of the people that they don't officially employ. I'm talking about soldiers and all the military. I'm talking about police forces. I'm talking about all these things that they put their money into, into waging war against humanity. Because I don't care if you're on the other side of the world. I don't care if you're the same color as me or speak the same language as me. We're all brothers and sisters. We all are cut ultimately from the same stock. And we've all been compromised by whoever this elite group is, whether they're extraterrestrials or whether they're just humans that have sold out. They have taken our essence and limited it so that we don't see the bigger picture, so that we don't wake up, so that we don't turn on the lights in our, within ourselves so that we can ultimately turn on the lights for everyone else to see. That's what I've been trying to do all of my life. Now, it changes as I go through things. I mean, I focus on things that are, that are, that are demanding my attention, as you would too, as we all would. And I forgot that this thing doesn't have the timing on it, so I don't know. It doesn't have a clock that when I started. Darn it, that's the, that's the shortfall of this thing. <laughs> and the other one always had a clock, so I knew exactly how much time I was spending. But in any case, these are some things that I've been thinking about when I got the question of, of, of challenging me, saying the earth is not overpopulated. We're running out of space. We're running out of, of land that's, that's good for use. I know. We were, we're simply not applying our, that our abundance. We're not applying what we have at hand and our knowledge and our creative powers. We're not applying them to fixing the problem. Instead, we're fighting each other unnecessarily. If only we could get on the same page. Anyway, I, again, I, I didn't even look at the clock to see what time it is, so I don't know how long this video is. That's one of the shortcomings of Zoom. You've got you've to pay attention. I need to put a clock. Uh, now, there's a clock, of course, right on the computer. But uh, I need to be able to see exactly when I start so I know when to end the video. 
Anyway, uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you consider some of the things that I've shared, and I'm sure there will be more on other videos to come. Uh, I already have a topic set up for the next video if uh, the person agrees. Anyway, that's all for today. Namaste.